So in this video I want to show you a different kind of antenna that I've been working on recently and it's based off the blade antenna that I did some time ago. Now the one I'm holding here and the one I'm going to show you in this video is 2.4 gigahertz and the uh, actual construction method is exactly the same as the uh, blade antenna, the uh, methods that I use but this time it's got this uh, little parabolic reflector in here so what this actually does is take some of the uh, power that uh, would normally be wasted on this side of the antenna and directs it in that direction. So I just want to quickly show you an example actually using light um, as to how this uh, particular antenna actually works and the uh, idea behind it. So what we've got here is a light bulb in a room and uh, at the moment it's just the uh, power cable hanging down from the ceiling with just a light bulb in place and uh, the light is omnidirectional just like an omnidirectional antenna like this one the uh, light is going off in all different directions just like uh, the RF signal would in an omnidirectional antenna. So now if we take the same light bulb but this time we put a light shade on there then what's going to happen to that light is it's going to be focused down more and we're not going to have so much light being wasted on the ceiling because obviously nobody's got the chair on the ceiling everybody is down here on the floor so the light is directed more into an area where you actually want it so the actual room actually seems brighter with a lamp um, with a shade on than it does with uh, one without and of course you're also going to get some light at the top of the ceiling it doesn't completely block all that light out altogether because you get reflections off the walls etc so I've got the antenna on the back of my mini quad here now as most of you know I don't actually fly mini quads this is the uh, first model I've ever bought and uh, I've had it for some time I've just got to find some time to actually finish this off hopefully I'll uh, get some time when we break up from school in a few weeks time but what what I've seen with most videos is people who fly around most of the time um, they're actually at quite a uh, level that's uh, to their waist height it's uh, not very often they go really really down to the uh, ground level or there are people who do backflips and such but from what I've uh, observed most of the RF signals that are coming at the top of the mini quad from up here say are actually wasted so this antenna is a uh, down lighter for RF and you can um, look at RF in the same way as light because they belong to the same spectrum and uh, what this little uh, parabolic reflector does is actually uh, radiate most of the power coming from this antenna downwards and in quite a wide beam as well you also get some radiation actually coming from this stem here because it is based off a uh, simple dipole remember so I just think this uh, might be a nice idea for you to have in your arsenal if you like because the way I see antennas is uh, if you have a few to choose from it's it's much the same way as a uh, racing driver has lots of different tires to suit uh, lots of different conditions not just if it's wet or dry for instance different uh, race tracks have different uh, tires and this is the same with antennas depending on how you're going to fly this antenna might be perfect for you if uh, you intend to kind of fly you know above your height all the time and not to actually come right down to ground level and although if you do come down to land it quite near you it's not going to lose connection with the uh, camera at all because as I've said you still get some uh, radiating uh, frequency coming from the back here as well now to make the parabolic curve that's uh, on this antenna you're going to need to find yourself an aerosol can now aerosol cans uh, of this size are pretty universal all over the world this is about uh, 50 51 millimeters in diameter and uh, they're actually all the same no matter what the contents are this is uh, actually a, a branded surface cleaner and this is an extremely cheap air freshener but uh, both of them have these uh, parabolic curves on the base now the reason they have the parabolic curve there is to keep all that pressure that's uh, inside the can in order to actually uh, use the propellant inside there. So the uh, parabolic curve is a true parabolic curve and it even has, you can work out its uh, focal point which is between 18 and 20 millimeters away from the center of uh, the uh, curve there. So uh, that's where it actually intensifies any beam that's caught in uh, this curve. 
Now to actually cut this away from the can you've got to make sure that there is absolutely no propellant in there whatsoever it's all being exhausted you know if you pick up one that uh, you know you've uh, emptied just take it outside and press that again just to make sure that there's no propellant left in here whatsoever as long as you do that then actually uh, puncturing this and cutting it there's uh, no risk to you whatsoever it's uh, it's just if you have got propellant still in this then uh, if you puncture it it will explode all over the place so just please 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 make sure that you've completely emptied it before you actually start cutting into this so as I said it's uh, a nice little antenna to use and if you treat antennas just like uh, like I said a racing car driver would treat his tyres you know you should have uh, quite a few different options in your little kit there when you actually go out uh, flying your quadcopter so uh, let's crack on then and uh, get the tools out and I'll show you how I made this little antenna now I've made sure that there is absolutely no propellant left in this can at all before I start puncturing it or cutting it and uh, what I've actually done I've uh, emptied this out completely until there was no more propellant coming out of the top here and I left it on the side for 10 minutes just to sit and come back to it and you get uh, like another second of propellant coming out of the top here when you press it down so just make really sure there's no propellant left in this whatsoever before you start cutting into it or puncturing it so I've got a uh, sharp tool here so I'm just going to puncture it with a small hole first just to show you that there's absolutely no propellant left in there at all so it's not dangerous as long as you make sure that you've completely emptied the can so now I'm going to start using my cutting wheel to actually cut around here and what I want to do is actually butt the uh, cutting wheel up to this ridge here because uh, originally I left this ridge in place like on this one here but uh, it adds a lot of weight to the antenna so what I've uh, decided to do now is completely cut away that ridge as well so you've actually got some folded metal here it's not soldered on or anything like that it's uh, done with a fold so first of all you'll end up cutting through and you'll release the uh, bottom and this ridge here from the main body the can itself but if you keep cutting all the way through you'll cut through so uh, you remove this ridge at the same time and uh, what I found it's easier to actually cut through removing the ridge at the same time while it's still attached to this can here because it's a little bit tricky to get this into a vise to cut this off and holding it with your hands is a little bit dangerous so you're actually looking to separate the uh, parabolic shape here the base of the can from this ridge as well so that's what we're going to do so I'm going to go around a few times just to make this ridge a little bit deeper that's in there butting the wheel up against that uh, ridge at the base there to act as a guide to help me So now that I've gone round it a few times to make that ridge a little bit deeper I'm going to now start cutting all the way through to cut away this base here from the can itself and also from this rim. So there you can see the cutting wheel has gone all the way through that can and that ridge so what I'm doing is separating them both at the same time just to make it a lot easier like I said previously it's just a little bit tricky to hold in a vise and a little bit dangerous to actually hold it with your hands because it does get quite hot. And it's a lot safer and a lot easier if you uh, hold a Dremel in a uh, fixed position like this and actually move the can to actually cut into there. You will, won't get the wheel jumping out as much and uh, you're less likely to actually snap these little cutting wheels because they are fragile. And you're probably going to need at least two to actually cut this away from the uh, base of the can. So the part that I actually want is completely come away now from this rim and the can itself and uh, like I say if you're not too bothered about weight you can actually leave this rim in place but uh, what I'm going to do now is tidy up the edges of this uh, parabolic curve here and uh, then we can move on to the next stage. So now we're going to actually move on to the driven element for this antenna and the copper wire that I'm going to be using is uh, around the 21 SWG mark and I've actually got it from um, this multi-core earth wire here I've just bought a few meters of this it's as uh, cheap as chips and you just uh, 
cut it to the length that you actually want it and just strip it back and you get quite a few strands of copper wire out of it it's a uh, quite a cheap way of uh, actually getting copper wire to uh, build antennas from so we're going to make the elements then and uh, what I'm going to need to do is make two elements in this shape here and one in this diamond shaped here now I've got uh, my little tube at uh, 25 millimeters here to help me and I've also got a piece of perspex and it measures 25 millimeters across there to help me my uh, trusty um, needle nose pliers here with a nice flat surface so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the diamond shape first so first of all I'm going to use my little measuring tube here I'm going to put my first bend in and put the needle nose pliers up to that and that's exactly a quarter wavelength at 25 millimeters and I'm going to put a right angle bend in there so next I'm going to take my little perspex block here and I'm going to do the same thing just like making a bi-quad I'm going to get my needle nose pliers lined up on there and again put another bend I'm going to carry on going round until I get a perfect square so finally then get my side cutters and just trim that off there now what I actually need to do now is I actually want the distance from here where these two ends don't meet to the top here to actually be a quarter wavelength so that wants to be a 25 millimeters gap there so you need to actually bend it to uh, make this diamond shape so you've got exactly 25 millimeters gap in between there and there so next we need to actually make these little v-shaped elements here which is a quarter wavelength and a quarter wavelength and uh, I find it easier to just kind of guesstimate a little bit longer than uh, the 25 millimeters you want put a right angle bend in like so and then use this little measuring tool here get it lined up on the board there and then use your side cutters and just trim that away and do the same on the other side so now we've got most of the main parts of this antenna prepared we're going to start actually constructing it together now and uh, what I've actually got here is a piece of semi-rigid coax and that's 130 millimeters long I'm also going to need some uh, tubing now I've uh, got this tubing from uh, one of these cheap telescopic antennas you can buy these from the uh, pound shop or find them in the wreckers yard off uh, old cars things like that and uh, we're going to need to recreate the uh, tube in here on this dipole because this antenna is effectively based off the uh, a uh, simple dipole antenna that's why the uh, actual wavelength measurements are the same as a dipole so I've got my semi-rigid coax here and I've prepared it by actually trimming away 25 millimeters of the inner core here which is a quarter wavelength and I've left just one millimeter of the dielectric at the bottom here to act as a uh, insulator from the uh, inner core with the outer braid I have also put some heat shrink tubing down here which is uh, a little bit longer than a quarter wavelength so it's about 30 millimeters there because I'm going to be inserting the tube over the top of there and actually soldering this tube right to the edge of that um, outer braid there that's uh, just before the heat shrink tubing and uh, same with the reflector as well the uh, hole that I've drilled in the reflector is just uh, wide enough to actually fit a nice tight fit for that uh, metal tube there so I'm going to be soldering it right on that uh, point there and uh, I've actually sacrificed a small dipole antenna here to show you why you actually need this heat shrink tube in here now what this is actually doing it's acting uh, like a ballon as well as being part of the antenna if that tubing was uh, not there or it was actually ground into the coax here as well then this antenna would not work properly because it would not see that as being a quarter wavelength it would take all the length of this coax into consideration with this antenna so the antenna would not work properly at 2.4 gigahertz so that's why you need to actually isolate this part of the semi-rigid coax because we're just going to be soldering on to that small amount there and then the tube is going to come down like a sleeve making no contact down here whatsoever just contact just there where we're going to solder so I'm now ready to actually solder everything together now so I've uh, got it in the uh, little clamp here 
and uh, what I'm going to do is just get in there with my soldering iron and just flow a little bit of solder around there just uh, melting the solder that's already there that's been tinned up and uh, I'm sorry you're not getting a very good shot because it is a parabola so you're getting uh, reflection off the uh, lights here in the workshop so you want to try and be as quick as possible because you don't want to get too much heat in there and end up melting that dielectric so I'm kind of tacking it in place giving each side a chance to cool down and that's now soldered in place it's really really strong there's plenty of solder on there but uh, when we've actually built up the main driven elements of this as well I'm going to add a little bit of epoxy putty around there just to uh, protect everything and make it even stronger so I'm getting ready to solder all the elements onto the uh, center wire here the signal wire and uh, again the key to doing this uh, right is to actually solder up the uh, points where you're going to be soldering onto so I've got some solder here on the end and some solder down there on the bottom and all my uh, elements are actually pre-tinned as well so a little bit of heat on the top and because I've pre-tinned everything and solder in place so I'm getting ready to solder the bottom legs on now and you just want to try and bend those so they sit naturally at the point where you actually want to solder them onto and it's just the same method to put the side elements in place a little bit of heat to get that solder flowing so this is the final element and really you want to try and get a uh, pair of tweezers like this because it really does help the uh, actual elements when you're actually soldering them really do get hot so what I'm actually going to do now is uh, get a little bit of epoxy putty and just work it in around the base there in between the bottom of these uh, elements you could also probably use hot glue as well if you wanted to so I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, another thing to mention is you could actually use this uh, method and design on uh, something like a clover leaf to actually get some circular polarization going but um, if you uh, actually wanted to do a 2.4 gigahertz at uh, say a clover leaf the diameter of uh, this parabolic curve here is too small for that you would need to find a uh, slightly bigger can but the diameter on uh, this parabola here is uh, perfect for a clover leaf antenna at 5.8 gigahertz so i'll probably do a video on that in the future but uh, most of the construction methods would be exactly the same as this antenna so again as i said i hope you enjoyed that video drop a comment below and uh, give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and uh, like i said drop a comment below if you've got any questions and uh, any feedback that you want to actually give me and uh, i want to send a few of these out to uh, people so if uh, you weren't quick enough last time i sent some antennas out for testing then uh, please drop a comment below let me know and uh, i'll pm you and you can send me your address and i'll send you one of these out so you can test it yourself but uh, if I do send you one for testing, that goes along with the caveat that uh, you have to make a little video and upload it to YouTube so we can all see how uh, well it actually performs and what you actually think of it as well. So as I said, I hope you enjoyed this little video and hopefully you'll join me for the next one.